after the man stuffed the envelope into the mailbox, the mailbox actually opened automatically. He rushed back to check on the situation and found a letter in the mailbox that had just been left empty. He looks around incredulously, but there is no sign of it. The man's name is Deck. He bought this lake house a while ago. He had just moved here when he saw a letter. The letter said his name was Annie, and that he was a former tenant of the cabin. She was forced to move out of the house because she had to go to work in the city. She hadn't had time to change her address. She asked the tenant to forward the letter for her. At the end of the letter, she left a note about the dog footprints in front of the door. She apologized for the dog's footprints, which had been there since before she moved in. Jack was puzzled by the contents of the letter because there were no dog tracks on the doorstep. And as far as he knew, the house had no previous tenants. Jack thought it was just a stranger's prank. But the next day, Jack was painting a handrail when a stray dog appeared. He stepped on the paint and left footprints on the door. This reminded Jack of Annie's letter from last night. So Jack wrote back, thinking that Annie had misremembered the address and asking how she knew about the dog's footprints. Annie came back to the cottage to check her mail and found Jack's reply. The contents of the letter puzzled her. When she saw that it was dated 2004, she immediately wrote a reply. She emphasized that she was the previous tenant, but had now moved out. Annie left her current address in the letter, along with a timestamp from 2006. Jack was shocked to receive the letter. He then finds the address in Annie's letter, only to discover that it's still an unfinished construction site. According to the schedule, the house would not be ready for occupation for another 18 months. The next morning, Jack sends another letter questioning the information in Annie's letter. To prove that she wasn't lying, she wrote in the letter that on April 3, 2004, there had been a spring snowstorm, and many people would catch a cold because of it. She also enclosed a scarf to remind Jack to be careful of the flu. But Jack, who received the letter, didn't care and just threw it aside, because today is April 3rd. But there was no snow inside all day, let alone now. But when he turned around, he saw a scene that surprised him. Outside the window, Goose Feather Snow was actually falling. At this moment, Jack finally realized that the Annie in the letter was from the future, and that the mysterious mailbox was a link to the future, and that mysterious mailbox was the gateway to time and space. From then on, the two of them often communicated with each other by sending letters. From their favorite music to their favorite books, from daily chores to memories, even words buried in their hearts were conveyed through letters. The mailbox became a vehicle for the two to communicate their thoughts. In a big city, two lonely men and women used their pen to give each other warmth. They cared for each other during the two-year interval. Even more amazingly, they realized that they were accompanied by the same dog. Annie said the dog's name was Jerry. Jack tried to call him, and the dog got up immediately. In this way, the two lonely souls found solace in their daily exchanges. As they communicated more frequently, a subtle affection grew between them. At the same time, they are no longer satisfied with the exchange of letters. Although they couldn't meet in the real world, Jack still wanted to go on a date with Annie. He puts a punctuated map in his mailbox and invites Annie to go out with him on weekends, in a different time and space, enjoying the same scenery together. On the way back to the city, Annie even saw a message from Jack from two years ago. In the evening, Annie said that the scenery today was beautiful, but in her heart she missed the lake house the most especially the trees behind it, because of the view from the window, which she hadn't seen since she moved away. After reading Annie's thoughts, Jack transplanted the saplings from the cabin to Annie's unfinished apartment. He hoped that the little tree would shelter Annie from the wind and rain instead of himself. The tree, carrying Jack's wish, appeared one rainy night and sheltered Annie from the storm. Through this, Annie wanted to ask Jack to do her a favor. Two years ago, she left her father's book at the station. She wants Jack to go to the station to see if he can retrieve it and maybe even see the person he used to be. That day Jack caught a glimpse of Annie with her boyfriend. A wave of loss and sadness washed over Jack. By the time he regained his senses, Annie had already boarded the train. Then Jack got the book that Annie had left behind. But when he tried to return it, the train had already started. He had no choice but to watch the train leave him. By now, Annie has seen Jack, but she doesn't recognize him. Their first meeting never took place. Jack goes home and writes a letter apologizing to Annie, but instead of putting the book in the mailbox, he wants to give it to her in person someday. To be the first time they actually met. That day Jack was in his car negotiating a job. Jerry, the dog, suddenly jumped out of the car and ran away. Jack rushed after him and followed him to a house. He saw men carrying drinks and talked to him. 
Jack realizes that this man is actually Annie's boyfriend at this point in time. The man enthusiastically tells Jack that a birthday party will be held today to celebrate Annie's birthday and invites Jack to come and join him. In the evening, after a busy day, Annie came home and was slightly embarrassed by the sudden appearance of the crowd. Although it was a surprise from her boyfriend, she didn't like the party. All she wanted was a moment of peace and quiet. After dealing with the guests, Annie went out to relax on the patio. Jack was waiting for her again. He had so much to say to Annie, but he didn't know how to say it. He sat down next to Annie and talked to her in an awkward and difficult way. Suddenly a feeling of deja vu came over Annie. Although it was the first time they had met and talked, the atmosphere was very relaxed. So they lost track of time and got lost in the conversation. Their souls were in tune with each other. After a long time, Annie finally came to her senses and got up to leave. Jack, however, was reluctant to end the conversation and wanted to stay, but hesitated to find an excuse. At that moment, a beautiful music came from the room. The two danced with their hands outstretched. As the music builds to a crescendo, their distance is getting closer and closer, and the atmosphere is gradually becoming ambiguous. The two soulmates kissed each other at this moment, but their boyfriends showed up, and they fled the scene in embarrassment. The next day, in 2006, this memory suddenly popped into Annie's head. She wrote a letter blaming Jack for being too cowardly to admit his feelings for her. But Jack had his own considerations. He didn't want to intervene as a third party in Annie's relationship. Luckily, Annie had broken up with him. He was able to enter Annie's life as a normal person. He planted a seed of love in his heart and waited for their meeting in the future. But it didn't take long. Jack couldn't help but miss her. He had the bright idea to meet Annie tomorrow. He told Annie that he had made a reservation at a restaurant for two years. All Annie had to do was show up on time tomorrow. It was two years before Annie's tomorrow, but he was willing to wait. Annie gladly agreed to his request, longing for tomorrow night. The next evening, Annie arrived at the restaurant where they had met, dressed to the nines. She waited with great anticipation for the appearance of her time lover. But as time passed, Annie's enthusiasm cooled. She waited until the restaurant closed, but she didn't see Jack. Annie didn't think Jack was coming. Her face was filled with despair. She still hoped Jack would show up, but she also began to reflect on the illusory nature of her love. The feeling of being so close, yet so untouchable, was too much for her to bear. Back at home she writes to Jack to tell him about the day, and Jack is deeply puzzled by the situation. After apologizing to Annie, he continued to invite her, but was rejected by Annie. In Annie's opinion, after two years, Jack may have changed his mind and that's why he didn't show up. Although the communication during this period of time has made her fall in love, but the relationship across the time and space is still so unrealistic. In the end, she chose to cut off contact with Jack and devote herself to real life. From that day on, Jack's letters went unanswered, but he still hoped every day that Annie would come back to him. But as the mailboxes piled up, Jack finally realized she wasn't coming back. After putting Annie's books in the mailbox, he sealed all the letters and moved out of the cottage. On his way out, he gave the keys and the puppy to Annie's boyfriend, hoping to pass them on to her, and then turned around and left the place. Two years have passed in a hurry, and life is as uneventful as ever. Annie's relationship changed. She's made up with her ex-boyfriend. Although she knew she didn't love him, she had someone to fall back on. And Jack, in 2006, had adapted to living on his own. He started a remodeling company with his brother. It wasn't long before. Annie was planning to remodel her house in order to improve her life. And Valentine's Day, she and her boyfriend came to the remodeling company to discuss the plan. As they were about to leave, Annie came across a familiar design. It was the lake house she used to rent, and her buried feelings came out in a flood of emotion. Annie smiled and asked the sailor where the design came from. When she heard the designer's answer, she asked for Jack's contact information. But she didn't expect to learn the sad news from her brother's mouth. The designer was killed in a car accident two years ago today. Her brother's words hit in like a rock in her memory. Pieces of her mind reappeared at that moment. She recalled two years ago, when she and her mother were chatting in the square. When a car accident occurred, a man was knocked to the ground by a bicycle. And, as a doctor, rushed to the rescue, but was unable to save the other man's life. But she didn't realize that the man in the accident was Jack. At that moment, she finally realized the reason why Jack didn't keep his promise that day. Knowing the truth, Annie rushed to the lake house and wrote a reminder to Jack with trembling hands. 
Then she slipped the envelope into the mailbox that had been used to deliver their love, and prayed to God with nervousness and devotion. I hope it's not too late. And Jack, in another time, suddenly thought. Annie had told herself that on Valentine's Day 2006, she had witnessed a car accident in the square on Valentine's Day 2006. He drove back to the cottage to see her again, looked up the letters and found out where she was. Then he couldn't wait to get to the square and see the Annie he'd always wanted. Just as Jack was about to cross the street, the switch on the gas tank suddenly flipped, and Jack received a letter from Annie. The letter said to wait for two more years. At that moment, his untouchable lover was on the other side of the road. Jack could only control himself not to walk towards her, and this time, he was given a definite time. Even if he had to wait for two years, he was willing to do it. Go back to 2008. Annie was praying when she heard a car roar in the distance. He slowly got up to see who was coming, and it was the love of his life. Over the wall of life built by the intertwining of time and space, they were out of each other's reach when they finally collided. From now on, they will never be apart again. The two who love each other will join hands and go together, to a future where they will be with each other. You waited.